Hi everybody, Michelle here. Today I'm sharing a Valentine's Day illustration in watercolor that you can make to give someone special. Rather than a jar of flowers, I thought it would be fun to paint a jar full of heart-shaped lollipops. So feel free to paint along with me. I'll go over the steps and the process I followed to paint this cute little illustration. So I start my illustration off with a sketch. Whenever I'm drawing something that requires a bit of symmetry, like a glass jar, I find that drawing on graphing paper helps me to maintain even proportions. I also like to draw on something other than my watercolor paper because I pencil in a lot of lines before I really decide on the shapes um, of things. And so I'm a little bit of a messy drawer in that way. I don't draw on my watercolor paper first because I don't want to damage the paper with too much erasing. And you can see I'm doing a lot of erasing as I'm sketching out on the graph paper. <laughs> sketch of my illustration, I draw it onto some tracing paper. This gives me another opportunity to sort of perfect my illustration and it also allows me an easy way to transfer my sketch over to my watercolor paper. So I'll pencil in on the back of my sketch and trace it onto my watercolor paper just like we did in elementary school art class. Um, if my trace comes over a bit darker than my liking, I also can lighten it up a little bit with my eraser um, because I don't want too many pencil marks to show through the painting. <laughs> drawing transferred, I'm ready to start mixing up my paints. I'm going to mix up some mid-range and dark reds and also some variations of pinks so that I can have some highlights and shadows just to give the impression that the lollipops are 3D. Um, and so I'm going to spend some time mixing up a range of colors until I'm happy with what I like. I start painting by putting down some lighter watery mixes of the reds and pinks and I use a damp clean brush in several areas to pull up paint um, for example near where the the sucker handle um, would be seen through the lollipop and a little towards the tops of the lollipops where the light would hit them and then I just proceed to play around with the tones to get the effect I'm looking for. Um, and I try to make sure that each lollipop is dry before I paint an area that would touch another lollipop because I don't want to have any blends. I want to wait till each one is dry before um, I paint an adjacent lollipop.
beat some base colors down, I proceed to just play around with the tones to get the effect I'm looking for. So I try to darken the center of the lollipops where the candy is sort of at its thicker, thickest. And I try to create some highlights again towards the top by using a damp, clean brush to lift up the paint. And you'll see me do this kind of consistently throughout um, this painting. You can also see I'm making liberal use of my paper towel to dab off any excess paint because I kind of want to be precise with the amount of paint I'm using. I don't want to overdo it um, and, and have my paint go everywhere because I want to sort of have a very specific effect of trying to get this 3D look. pops dry a little bit and turn my attention to working on the glass mason jar. Glass is really tough for me. It's hard to paint something that's like basically clear um, because it is clear obviously so how do you make it seem like it's there? Um, but then again no glass is totally clear. There's shadows on it. Um, so to do the shadows we see on glass, I mixed up a really, really watery mixture of gray, black, and indigo. That's kind of my go-to um, to get sort of the glass shading color. And I paint the sides of the glass and also the lips where you would see um, the mason jar, where you would screw the lip, lid on the mason jar. Um, and then I kind of also painted in sort of the back half and the bottom, that kind of circular half oval that I put at the bottom just to give the effect that it's 3D. <laughs> Thank you. 
Again, I'm starting to use some thicker um, paint mixture to create a little bit more of um, shadows around the edges of the lollipops and to try and kind of differentiate the lollipops from each other as well so you can see which ones are in, in front and which ones are behind. darkening up the edges to sort of show that differentiation. I also like putting in like dark circles dots on my um, lollipops because like if you've ever looked at, at a lollipop like this before you see there will be like some air bubbles in there so I'm trying to kind of show that effect in these as well. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, another break from the lollipops and return to the mason jar. And I'm going to start building up the shadows a little bit more. Again, I'm using that gray mixture that I mixed up. Um, I also use this gray mixture on the lollipop stems or sticks. <laughs> um, and you'll see me go back and forth between the lollipops and the mason jar as I wait for each section to dry. I can work on the other section. And that's kind of one of the more fun things to do with watercolor is you can work on multiple sections at, at different times.
of the elements of the painting basically how I like it. I get to go and put on some finishing touches. Um, one of my favorite uh, finishing touches to use is white gouache, which is sort of a thicker watercolor base paint. Um, and I use the gouache to add highlights on the lollipops where the light source would reflect. And I'll also be adding some white gouache to the lollipops like the sticks. <laughs> finishing touch is to use my gold watercolor to write in be mine which is obviously a pretty well-known valentine's phrase i use faux calligraphy by thickening my downstroke so anytime when i'm writing my pen would be going down i'll go back and, and thicken those um those lines and I do tend to like to write in pencil first. It just makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> Okay, so there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you like it. I hope you make this for somebody you care about. And like and subscribe for more watercolor content.